Welcome to our, our Easter service this morning. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Billy. I'm one of the pastors. And I just want to, on behalf of the entire staff, thank you for being in the house this morning. You know, Easter is undoubtedly the most important day in the Christian calendar because it commemorates that moment where Jesus, God's love broke through into human history. When God brought Jesus back from the dead, it proved once and for all, incontrovertibly, that he was who he said he was the Son of God, and that He accomplished what He came here to do, which was to save every single one of us of our sins and to offer salvation and forgiveness to anyone who would believe in Him. It's the most important moment. And for 2,000 years, people tried to prove that the the resurrection didn't happen, but it all failed. Many, in fact, became believers themselves after doing the investigations that they did. And, And we're here today to witness to that fact and to celebrate that fact. And if you're a guest in the house this morning, we're especially glad that you're here because the the resurrection of Jesus Christ has tremendous power for your life. And if you're here this morning and you are a Christian, well, we must never get tired of hearing this message of what God did for us in Jesus Christ because it is the beginning of our lives, amen, and the life that he wants to give us. Uh, Jesus redeemed our destiny and secured our eternity by bearing our sin on the cross. That's what Easter is all about. When Jesus went to the cross on Good Friday, he did it to bear the sins of humanity, your sins and mine, on that cross. Look at what the Bible says. It says, God made him who had no sin to become or to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. See, God takes our sin, put it on Jesus, so that we can be righteous in his place. That because of what he did, we can stand before God as righteous. And maybe you're here this morning and say, well, I'm not righteous. Well, you're right, and neither am I, and neither is anyone else in this room. But because of what Jesus did, we can stand before God as righteous because he became sin for us. Romans 5 says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Any ungodly people here, don't raise your hand. But Christ died for you and for me. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love in this, that while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. See, there's a, there's a myth in our culture that says, I have to be good enough to earn God's love and God's approval. And if I'm not good enough, then God's going to reject me. He's going to cast me out. You see, that's not what Christianity teaches. The Bible actually teaches that we are sinners, and that's why we needed a Savior. And when we receive Jesus in our lives, we become righteous just as he is righteous. Irregardless, regardless our past, irrespective of what our, our lives may even look like right now, God declares us righteous. See, the bad news is all of us are sinners. I have, I have three kids. Any parents in the house here? Yeah? I think we got a shot of my kids yesterday. We, uh, um, we, we had a little Easter egg hunt at my house. There they are. Now, now don't let them fool you. Okay? They're sinners. <laughs> I love them. They're cute. The baby especially. Don't let her fool you. See, she gives you that innocent look, but then it all comes out when you're not looking. But, you know, uh, you know I, when I became a parent, you know, I realized that I don't have to teach my kids how to sin. They learned that all by themselves. You know what I'm talking about? I didn't have to teach them to be selfish. I didn't have to teach them to be mean. I didn't have to teach them to be violent. They learned that all on their own. My job as a parent is to beat that out of them in love, in Jesus' name, right? (laughs) Not literally, okay? But, But to get that sin out of them and to help them to learn how to not be the sinners that they naturally are. I mean, I'm amazed. I look at my daughter, McKenna. She's one years old. She's so cute. But man, that girl knows how to, how to throw things. You know what I'm saying? She knows how to hit when you're not looking. She knows how to take things and hide them. I lost my, 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 my wedding ring ones. You know where it was? In her high chair. You know what I'm saying? Actually, that was Maddie. I forget. I get them all mixed up already. You know, they, they, sin is at the core of who we are as human beings. And so some of us are hearing you go, man, you don't know the stuff that I've done in my past. Well, you know what? I, I don't need to know that. Because the Bible tells us that we're all sinners. And God sent Jesus to die to save every single one of us. If I were to sit here today and, and tell you all of my sins, and you're probably like, I like here, <laughs> not right now. Uh, you, you know, but, but listen, every single one of us have a debt before God that we cannot pay. There's a separation from God because of our sin that we cannot bridge. And therefore, God sent his son Jesus to be that bridge. And in the clip that you saw, when Jesus cried out at the end, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, what had happened was when sin, when he literally embodied the sins of the world on the cross, A holy God from heaven could no longer look at his son because he became the very thing that he reviled, sin itself. And so for the first time ever, the relationship between father and son, which had no beginning and no ending, God had to turn his face from Jesus. And Jesus experienced the separation from God that he had never experienced before. And he felt in that moment what it was like to be rejected by God because of sin. See, what we experience in life when it comes to pain, 
suffering, anxiety, depression, that's a result of us being separated from God. But Jesus took the rejection that we deserve so that we can receive the acceptance that he deserves. That no matter what we've done, we can receive unconditional love and acceptance from a holy God. How many of you think that's a good thing? Because, all right, thank you. Over here, they, they agree with me, all right. Because Jesus became sin and was rejected by God at the cross so that we could be re- reconciled to God for eternity. That's the message of the crucifixion. That's the message of Easter. He took our rejection so that we can be accepted by God. But it didn't end at crucifixion. Jesus rose from the dead to defeat the power of sin and to reconcile us personally to God. See, God wants a personal relationship with you. The first person who saw Jesus alive on the third day was a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene. The Bible tells us in Matthew that Jesus had cast out seven demons from her. She had a very uh, a bad past. She did things, she experienced things, abused. Many say that she was probably a prostitute. But God chose to reveal himself to this woman for a reason. I want to read to you what the Bible says about that. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw the angels, saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away. She didn't realize they were angels. And I don't know where you, they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, her name, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And for a moment, let's take a look at how this might have played out 2,000 years ago. Why are you crying? Have you taken him? Who? If you've taken him, please. Tell me where. And I will get him. Now, it's very significant that God chose to reveal himself, that Jesus, after he resurrected, to a woman. And all the women should say, amen. No, it wasn't amen. It, amen. it was a woman that he... Re- <laughs> 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 we see, in the ancient culture, you like that, all right. You can, you, can, you, can, you can use that later on at your parties and just wow your friends <laughs> and never get invited again. Um, you, see, see, in the ancient world, the testimony of a woman was invalid. I, I'm sorry, it's, it's unfortunate that's how it was. The testimony of a woman would have been invalid. And if we were going to make up a religion, we wouldn't let the first person to be a witness to that event be a woman because it would have it immediately invalidated the claim. Number one, Jesus did, God did that to show that, man, this is real, that, he, that he, he's, he's not afraid of what people think and what culture would say, man, I'm going to reveal myself to who I want to reveal myself to. But the second thing that we see here is that God is not a respecter of persons, Meaning that, as, as I shared earlier, Mary had a pretty bad past. He cast out seven demons from her, and we know that you don't experience demon in infestation in your life unless you've been through some really heavy stuff and done some really heavy stuff. And that was Mary's story. Most likely a prostitute, most likely you know, done a whole bunch of things that he, she regrets. But what this shows us is that God is not a respecter of person. 
He doesn't look at us based off of our past and say, oh, because of that, you were like that, or because you did that, man, my love's not going to break through into your life. My love only breaks through into good people, people who deserve it, who are worthy. That's not the story of the Bible. How many of you are thankful for that? The story of the Bible is that God's love breaks through into sinners like Mary, like me, and like us, amen? And, and we ought to be extremely thankful for that. See, the truth is this, that God doesn't judge us based off of our past failures, but based off of our present faith. God doesn't judge us based off of our past failures. See, we judge ourselves and one another based off of their past failures. Isn't that true? But that's not how God works. He judges us based off of our present faith. And if our faith is in Jesus, as we just said earlier, we are just as righteous as if we had never sinned at all. And so when God shows up in Mary's life, yeah, I know that you have a rough past. I know that you've done a lot of things that you regret. But I want to show you something. I want to teach the world something. I'm not a respecter of persons. I don't judge you based off of your past, but by your present faith. And Mary trusted in Jesus. She believed in Jesus so much so that when he heard her utter her, her name, heard him utter her name, she knew immediately that it was him. See, Jesus isn't just after uh, us having a religious experience. At Easter, a lot of us, we, you know, we, we were conjured up in our souls, this religious experience. I need to go to church. I need to get back in, in God's house, whatever. But we don't often don't want to have a personal relationship with him. As a parent, the greatest thing that I want is that I would have a personal relationship with my kids. I love watching them Easter egg hunt in the yard. You know what I'm saying? Even though I know where all the eggs are, I can see it. It's fun watching them look, you know? And you're almost kind of, you know, like, when are you going to be able to find it? It's like right there, right? But it's just fun watching them do it. I was just watching my one-year-old open the eggs and, and play with it. And I was just thinking to myself, man, this is, why does this bring me so much joy? Because I'm a father who loves his kids. And you know what God wants more than anything else is to have a relationship with you, is to walk with you through life, to, to go through the highs and the lows and to be there and to walk you through the storms and the trials and the joys and the happiness. God wants to be there like a loving father with his kids. He wants a personal relationship with us. And a personal relationship doesn't happen at, at a one-time moment. It's an ongoing thing. Isn't that true? It's an ongoing thing where we grow in love more and more with God. See, salvation isn't something that we earn, it's a gift that God gives to us. Um, you know, when I, I love to give gifts to my kids, and I'm sure parents here love to do that. Um, and you know, my wife would always say, you, they, don't, they don't need that, why'd you buy that? Like whenever I go on a trip, I'll try to come home with something, like I gotta go on a trip tonight, I'm probably gonna buy them something, my wife's probably gonna scold me about it. You know, why are you spoiling them? Because I love them, because they're my kids, and I'll spoil them if I want, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, but, but there's something about me as a father, I just want to bless my kids. It's not based off of what they've done. It's based off of my love and affection for them. And I want to tell you today that God loves you. And he wants to offer salvation as a gift to you. If you will receive it, it'll be yours in faith because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Secures it for every single one of us. Can I hear an amen to that? And as we connect to Jesus by faith and follow him by grace, his love breaks through into every area of our lives. As we follow, as we connect to Jesus by faith and follow him by his grace, his love wants to break through into every area of our lives. All of us have areas in our lives where, that are kind of in tombs right now, like Jesus was in that tomb. Every single one of us has situations that seem dead, that seem hopeless. But as we walk with him, God wants to break through his light and his love into every area, bringing those dead areas to life. Do you believe that this morning? The Bible says this, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to, all, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. What is the criteria to become a child of God? Faith. That we just receive the gift in faith. That what Jesus did, we receive it in faith, and the Bible tells us we get to become children of God. Not because we've earned it not because we deserve it, but simply because God, by his grace, wants to give it. Amen? Nothing can separate you from his love if you'll come to him. Not your past, not your present. Nothing can separate us from his love. The Bible says this, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Many of us here this morning are, have experienced how the enemy has come to steal things away from our lives. We've grown up in broken homes. We've experienced pain. We've experienced loss. Listen, that wasn't God's plan. There's a very real devil that comes to take life away from us. But there's a very good God that wants to break through his love and bring life 
to where the devil brought death. And I want to share with you this morning a story uh, of, of, of a man in our church who's, I think, testimony powerfully illustrates this. Will you help me welcome to the stage my friend Sam Utu? Come on, Sam. This is, this is, my, man, this is my man Sam, uh, Army veteran. Uh, spent, we're going to sit down together like talk show style. <clears throat> um, uh, Army veteran spent three tours in Iraq, uh, served our country proudly. Thank you, by the way, for your service. Can we give, can we give him a hand for his service? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, it wasn't easy. And you experienced some things on the battlefield which we don't have to talk about in detail, but you were there uh, between 2004 and 2009, the height of the Iraq wars. And um, you experienced some, some things and you came home with some severe post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, he, he, you were having nightmares, memories, flashbacks, so you started drinking and even doing some drugs to kind of medicate that. Mm. Uh, wasn't really helping, started getting violent uh, towards your family and a whole bunch of different things. Suffered extreme anxiety in public, uh, uh, couldn't leave the house, couldn't take care of your family. Uh, they put you on psychological treatment, but that wasn't helping, and you wanted to kill yourself mm. numerous occasions. Sam. Talk to us about that. I mean, what was that like for you? Um, while I was deployed, or every time I deployed, you know, I, I knew God. I, I prayed. I, I prayed every day when I, when, I, when I was deployed. But, and I was, you know, I came back alive. But when, it, when I came back to the States, it was, it was more of a, um, I stopped praying because I made it back alive. I was selfish, mm -hmm. and you know um, that's when you know my deployment started to catch up with me. Is when I came back and um, contemplated suicide many times, um, uh, abused my uh, medications from uh, you know VA and stuff like that. But yeah, it was it, it, it was hard. I, I had a good support group. Um, my wife, she prayed fervently for me, and you know, I'm, I'm I'm grateful for that. And you know, yeah. I think we have some pictures of his army deployment. If you can throw that up there, uh, there you are. A lot skinnier back then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> small kind. Small, small kind. Yeah. I came home and it, all is good. You were the you were the gunner at the top of those Humvees, weren't you? Yeah. Wow. You know. The, the, the PTSD that you experienced was so bad, but, and, and, and it, was, it was like a tomb, you were telling me, you felt hopeless, you felt like, man, my life is just going to end, but God's love broke through that. Uh, your wife started going to church yeah. and invited you, mm -hmm. uh, but you didn't come in right away. Tell us about that a little bit. Uh, we were uh, at uh, LCC. Um, my wife and kids went into the church, and, and uh, I, I just stayed back and watched as, you know, the like a little bit more people was going into the church, so, uh, you know, I went in after everybody. It was for, for, for a good month, I, I sat back and watched. And you came into, and you sat in the back, and, and, and something happened. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I was, um, I was expecting anxiety. I was expecting, um, you know, me to feel a certain way, and I came in through the back, and it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. It was. Uh, I, I I really did feel love. You know, I really did feel loved, and uh, I try to. You know, the following Sunday, I. I try to seek it, where this feeling was coming from, not what my expectation of. Uh, I was supposed to feel, and. Yeah. Every time you came in, you felt the presence of God yeah. uh, touch you, and and it, it was it was weird. But you kept coming back, and, and you wanted to know more. And so finally, uh, Sam filled out one of those, uh, well, those connection cards to get connected. Yes. And uh, I remember I got that card, and I called you, uh, not knowing that you had PTSD. I was like, hey, let's meet in a crowded, noisy public place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we sat down at Starbucks right down the street, and uh, he began to tell me about his PTSD. I was like, oh, man, that was a bad idea. I should have went someplace quiet and safe. And, and you, were, you were visibly you know, having a hard time just even sitting through that. And I invited you to come to uh, our grace group. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and you said you were going to come, and so we expected you to come, but it you didn't exactly come. You kind of came. Tell us what happened when you first came. Mm, I sort of stalked these guys. I, <laughs> I, I, I stood outside of the zippies looking in, and um, I, I guess I had trust is, issues in. Well, you went. You had PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, well, yeah, I just stood from the outside and watched these guys for for about a month, expecting, you know, uh, these guys to act out in kind of some kind of anger or argue against each other. Or I, I didn't see any of that, uh, and that that was my my first step where I came forward and, you know, um, joined the group. Actually, sat in with the group. So it was funny. I didn't know that he stalked us for a month. I thought it was like a week. So I'd be like texting him, I'd tell the guys, oh, this guy Sam's going to come, I can't wait for you guys to meet him. And he's like, oh, he should be here. He said he's here, but he's not here. <laughs> but all along you were here, <laughs> looming and lingering uh, yeah. for a whole month. I didn't know that. And then, and then when he came, another guy uh, reminded me that uh, Sam sat down and we're at Zippy's again, public place. <laughs> come on, get, get with it, Billy. But anyway, um, we, we sat down and then I remember, I don't know if you remember this, but that your last line to us was, yeah, I was, I, I was nervous coming in and I was looking at all the exits, how I can escape and what I could use as a weapon if I ever needed to take you guys out. <laughs> We're sitting there like, oh man, please don't anger him, whatever you do. Um, but God began to work in your heart and began to, began to heal you of the PTSD. Stuff yeah, started happening. It was, um, man, death was knocking, man. Death was... Um, Death was there. He, he, Death was, you know, staring me in my face, and you know, meeting with um, in my grace group, you know, that's how I know um, Jesus conquered death because death wasn't there anymore. And um, yeah, it, it, it was. That was one of the many uh, healings that I seen um, with my uh, my PTSD was one of that most obvious moments in my life where uh, I didn't look at death the same way. Death you know, wasn't going to conquer over you. Yeah, death didn't run my life, you know. And I, at that moment, I knew who ran my life, and God is good. That's all Amen. I can say. Amen. We can give God a hand for that. He began to heal you of your PTSD. One of the, one of, Sam, your prayers, I don't know if you remember this, when you first, when we first talked was, I want to get healed of this and I want reconciliation with my family. Because you were gone, deployed while a lot of your kids were young. And um, tell us, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was hard kind of, um, I'm still trying to, you know, make amends with my, my kids, you know, especially my two older ones, Chloe and Douglas. I love you guys. But, uh, you know, that spirit of PTSD did get attached to, m to my kids and to my two older ones, and we're still going through the process of uh, making he um, healing those, those uh, bridges and, you know. And God's, God's going to do it. You, you see, the enemy comes to steal everything away from us, our dreams, our future, our destiny. But when we let God's love in, it brings healing and it brings breakthrough. I still remember one day uh, Sam texted me, hey, me and my wife are going to go see the movie Shooter. And I remember looking at my phone. I don't know if you know what that movie is. It's about, you know, violence, a war. I looked at my phone and I said, I texted him back, Sam, I don't know if that's a good idea, man. You sure you're going to be okay? And he's like, nah, nah, I get him, I get him. So I prayed, we prayed. I think he might have texted our group too, so we all prayed for him. After the movie was over, he texted us, like, man, it was great. The movie was okay, but I didn't have any flashbacks. I didn't have any any anything and that was a, that was a big turning point yeah it, it was seeing god's work you know his hand in you know in my life and you know i i could do you know what i guess normal people do is go watch movies yeah yeah and yeah and you're back in school now and you, you guys are getting ready to move and and god's doing some amazing things sam give us a a parting shot just from your experience of Death knocking at your door, but God's love breaking through. Um, parting shot? Uh, Encouragement to all of us. You know, if you... There's an island saying, what is it saying? Is, um, 
if you're ashamed, you starve. You know, don't, don't, don't be ashamed and seek, seek the Lord and go to group. Don't wait a month to, you know, <laughs> but... Don't you stalk know, your grace group, in other words. Yeah. yeah, don't stalk your grace group and, <laughs> you know, don't starve yourself. Get fed spiritually and mentally, you know. That's it. Come on. I think we have a picture of your family. You can, throw, you can throw up that family shot. God's doing some amazing stuff. How about a hand for Sam? Thank you, buddy. I'm proud of you, man. You know, actually, uh, I wanted to say while he was up here, Sam, when Sam was going through all his thing and God was working in his life, it was actually a really tough time in my life, too. And um, we're going through a lot with our son's health. And seeing God work in your life really encouraged me. I'm serious. So thank you. Seeing how God was healing him and just working in him. And I was just like, man, God, you're amazing. And it encouraged me. And you know what? There's nothing so dark that God's love can't break through. Death has no power over Jesus. Death has no power. And if death has no power, nothing else does either. I don't know what you're walking through right now, what kind of storms you're facing in your life. But if we'll, if we'll turn to him and open up our hearts in faith, and his love wants to cut through all of that and bring healing and transformation and resurrection. There's nothing that's dead that God can't bring back to life. There's nothing that's so dark that he can't let his light shine in. The only variable, the only issue is will we turn to him in faith. Thanks for joining us. Visit our website at pearlside.org for more.